Ludwig Heinrich Edler von Mises, German, Lu TVC FN Me, the 29th of September 1881 to the 10th of October 1973, was an Austrian-American theoretical Austrian school economist. Mises wrote and lectured extensively on behalf of classical liberalism. He is best known for his work on praxeology, a study of human choice and action. Mises emigrated from Austria to the United States in 1940. Since the mid-20th century, the libertarian movement in the United States has been strongly influenced by Mises' writings. Mises's student Friedrich Hayek viewed Mises as one of the major figures in the revival of liberalism in the post-war era. Hayek's work, The Transmission of the Ideals of Freedom, 1951, pays high tribute to the influence of Mises in the 20th century libertarian movement. Mises' Austrian school was a leading group of economists. Many of its alumni, including Hayek and Oskar Morgenstern, emigrated from Austria to the United States and Great Britain. Mises has been described as having approximately 70 close students in Austria and the Austrians as the insiders of the Chicago School of Economics. The Ludwig von Mises Institute was founded in the United States to continue his teachings. Biography <inaudible> 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 Early life Ludwig von Mises was born to Jewish parents in the city of Lemberg, Galicia, Austria-Hungary now Lviv, Ukraine. The family of his father, Arthur Edler von Mises, had been elevated to the Austrian nobility in the 19th century Edler indicates a noble landless family and they had been involved in financing and constructing railroads. His mother Adele nay Landau, was a niece of Dr. Joachim Landau, a Liberal Party deputy to the Austrian Parliament. Arthur von Mises was stationed in Lemberg as a construction engineer with the Chernowitz Railway Company. By the age of 12, Mises spoke fluent German, Polish and French, read Latin and could understand Ukrainian. Mises had a younger brother, Richard von Mises, who became a mathematician and a member of the Vienna Circle, and a probability theorist. When Ludwig and Richard were still children, their family moved back to Vienna. In 1900, Mises attended the University of Vienna, becoming influenced by the works of Karl Menger. Mises' father died in 1903. Three years later, Mises was awarded his doctorate from the School of Law in 1906. Topic: <laughs> Life in Europe. In the years from 1904 to 1914, Mises attended lectures given by Austrian economist Eugen von bohm bawerk He graduated in February 1906 Juris Doctor and started a career as a civil servant in Austria's financial administration. After a few months, he left to take a trainee position in a Vienna law firm. During that time, Mises began lecturing on economics and in early 1909 joined the Vienna Chamber of Commerce and Industry. During World War I, Mises served as a front officer in the Austro-Hungarian artillery and as an economic advisor to the War Department. Mises was chief economist for the Austrian Chamber of Commerce and was an economic advisor of Engelbert Dollfuss, the Austrofascist but strongly anti-Nazi Austrian Chancellor. Later, Mises was economic advisor to Otto von Habsburg, the Christian democratic politician and claimant to the throne of Austria which had been legally abolished in 1918 following the Great War. In 1934, Mises left Austria for Geneva, Switzerland, where he was a professor at the Graduate Institute of International Studies until 1940. While in Switzerland, Mises married Margit Herzfeld Sereny, a former actress and widow of Ferdinand Sereny. She was the mother of Gitta Sereny. Topic: <laughs> Work in the United States. In 1940, Mises and his wife fled the German advance in Europe and emigrated to New York City in the United States. He had come to the United States under a grant by the Rockefeller Foundation. Like many other classical liberal scholars who fled to the United States, he received support by the William Volcker Fund to obtain a position in American universities. Mises became a visiting professor at New York University and held this position from 1945 until his retirement in 1969, though he was not salaried by the university. 
Businessman and libertarian commentator Lawrence Fertig, a member of the New York University Board of Trustees, funded Mises and his work. For part of this period, Mises studied currency issues for the Pan Europa movement, which was led by Richard von Codenhove Kalergi, a fellow New York University faculty member and Austrian exile. In 1947, Mises became one of the founding members of the Mont Pelerin Society. In 1962, Mises received the Austrian Decoration for Science and Art for Political Economy at the Austrian Embassy in Washington, D.C. Mises retired from teaching at the age of 87 and died at the age of 92 in New York. He is buried at Ferncliff Cemetery in Hartsdale, New York. Grove City College houses the 20,000-page archive of Mises' papers and unpublished works. The personal library of Mises was given to Hillsdale College as bequeathed in his will. At one time, Mises praised the work of philosopher and novelist Ayn Rand, and she generally looked on his work with favor, but the two had a volatile relationship, with strong disagreements, for example, over the moral basis of capitalism. Topic. Contributions and influence in economics Mises wrote and lectured extensively on behalf of classical liberalism. In his magnum opus Human Action, Mises adopted praxeology as a general conceptual foundation of the social sciences and set forth his methodological approach to economics. Mises was for economic non-interventionism and was an anti-imperialist. He referred to the Great War as such a watershed event in human history and wrote that War has become more fearful and destructive than ever before because it is now waged with all the means of the highly developed technique that the free economy has created. Bourgeois civilization has built railroads and electric power plants, has invented explosives and airplanes, in order to create wealth. Imperialism has placed the tools of peace in the service of destruction. With modern means it would be easy to wipe out humanity at one blow. Friends and students of Mises in Europe included Wilhelm Röpke and Alfred Muller Armack, advisors to German Chancellor Ludwig Erhard, Jacques Ruf, monetary advisor to Charles de Gaulle, Gottfried Haberler, later a professor at Harvard, Lionel, Lord Robbins of the London School of Economics, Italian President Luigi Einaudi and Leonid Hervich, recipient of the 2007 Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences. Economist and political theorist Friedrich Hayek first came to know Mises while working as his subordinate at a government office dealing with Austria's post-World War I debt. While toasting Mises at a party in 1956, Hayek said, I came to know him as one of the best educated and informed men I have ever known. Mises' seminars in Vienna fostered lively discussion among established economists there. The meetings were also visited by other important economists who happened to be traveling through Vienna. At his New York University seminar and at informal meetings at his apartment, Mises attracted college and high school students who had heard of his European reputation. They listened while he gave carefully prepared lectures from notes. Among those who attended his informal seminar over the course of two decades in New York were Israel Kirzner, Hans Senholz, Ralph Rako, Leonard Ligio, George Reisman and Murray Rothbard. Mises' work also influenced other Americans, including Benjamin Anderson, Leonard Reed, Henry Hazlitt, Max Eastman, legal scholar Sylvester J. Petro and novelist Ayn Rand. Criticisms Economic historian Bruce Caldwell writes that in the mid-20th century, with the ascendance of positivism and Keynesianism, Mises came to be regarded by many as the archetypal unscientific economist. In a 1957 review of his book The Anti-Capitalistic Mentality, the economist said of Mises, "...Professor von Mises has a splendid analytical mind and an admirable passion for liberty, but as a student of human nature he is worse than null and as a debater he is of Hyde Park standard." Conservative commentator Whitaker Chambers published a similarly negative review of that book in the National Review, stating that Mises's thesis that anti-capitalist sentiment was rooted in envy epitomized know-nothing conservatism at its know-nothingest. In a 1978 interview, Friedrich Hayek said about Mises's book Socialism, at first we all felt he was frightfully exaggerating and even offensive in tone. You see, he heard all our deepest feelings, but gradually he won us around, although for a long time I had to, I just learned he was usually right in his conclusions, but I was not completely satisfied with his argument. 
Economist Milton Friedman considered Mises inflexible in his thinking. The story I remember best happened at the initial Mont Pelerin meeting when he got up and said, You're all a bunch of socialists. We were discussing the distribution of income, and whether you should have progressive income taxes. Some of the people there were expressing the view that there could be a justification for it. Another occasion which is equally telling, Fritz Macklup was a student of Mises's, one of his most faithful disciples. At one of the Mont Pelerin meetings, Macklup gave a talk in which I think he questioned the idea of a gold standard, he came out in favor of floating exchange rates. Mises was so mad he wouldn't speak to Macklup for three years. Some people had to come around and bring them together again. It's hard to understand, you can get some understanding of it by taking into account how people like Mises were persecuted in their lives. Economist Murray Rothbard, who studied under Mises, agreed he was uncompromising, but disputes reports of his abrasiveness. In his words, Mises was, "...unbelievably sweet, constantly finding research projects for students to do, unfailingly courteous, and never bitter." About the discrimination he received at the hands of the economic establishment of his time, Mises' 1927 book Liberalism has been largely ignored, except for its comments on fascism. Marxists Herbert Marcuse and Perry Anderson as well as German writer Klaus Dieter Krohn criticized Mises for writing approvingly of Italian fascism, especially for its suppression of leftist elements. In 2009, economist J. Bradford DeLong and sociologist Richard Seymour repeated the criticism. Mises wrote in the 1927 book, It cannot be denied that fascism and similar movements aiming at the establishment of dictatorship are full of the best intentions and that their intervention has, for the moment, saved European civilization. The merit that fascism has thereby won for itself will live on eternally in history. But though its policy has brought salvation for the moment, it is not of the kind which could promise continued success. Fascism was an emergency makeshift. To view it as something more would be a fatal error. Mises biographer Jorg Guido Hulsman says that critics who suggest that Mises supported fascism are absurd, as he notes that the full quote describes fascism as dangerous. He notes that Mises thought it was a fatal error to think that it was more than an emergency makeshift against the looming threat of communism and socialism as exemplified by the Bolsheviks in Russia. After Mises died, his widow quoted a passage that he had written about Benjamin Anderson. She said it best described Mises's own personality, his most eminent qualities were his inflexible honesty, his unhesitating sincerity. He never yielded. He always freely enunciated what he considered to be true. If he had been prepared to suppress or only to soften his criticisms of popular, but irresponsible, policies, the most influential positions and offices would have been offered him. But he never compromised. Topic. Bibliography. The Theory of Money and Credit 1912, Enlarged U.S. Edition 1953 Nation, State, and Economy 1919. Economic Calculation in the Socialist Commonwealth 1920 article Socialism, an Economic and Sociological Analysis 1922, 1932, 1951 Liberalismus 1927, 1962 translated into English, with the new title The Free and Prosperous Commonwealth A Critique of Interventionism 1929. A Critique of Interventionism Epistemological Problems of Economics 1933, 1960. Epistemological Problems of Economics Memoirs 1940. Interventionism, an Economic Analysis 1941, 1998 Interventionism, an Economic Analysis Omnipotent Government, The Rise of Total State and Total War 1944. Bureaucracy 1944, 1962. Planned Chaos 1947, added to 1951 edition of Socialism Planned Chaos Human Action, A Treatise on Economics 1949, 1963, 1966, 1996 Planning for Freedom 1952, enlarged editions in 1962, 1974, and 1980. The Anti-Capitalistic Mentality 1956. Theory and History, An Interpretation of Social and Economic Evolution 1957. Theory and History 
The Ultimate Foundation of Economic Science 1962. The Ultimate Foundation of Economic Science The Historical Setting of the Austrian School of Economics 1969. The Historical Setting of the Austrian School of Economics Notes and Recollections 1978. Clash of Group Interests and Other Essays 1978. The Clash of Group Interests and Other Essays On the Manipulation of Money and Credit 1978. The Causes of the Economic Crisis, Reissue Economic Policy, Thoughts for Today and Tomorrow 1979. Lectures given in 1959 Economic Policy, Thoughts for Today and Tomorrow Money, Method, and the Market Process 1990. Money, Method, and the Market Process Economic Freedom and Interventionism 1990. The Free Market and Its Enemies 2004. Lectures given in 1951. The Free Market and Its Enemies Marxism Unmasked, From Delusion to Destruction 2006. Lectures given in 1952. Ludwig von Mises on Money and Inflation 2010, lectures given in the 1960s Topic. See also Topic. References Topic. Further reading Butler, Eamon, Ludwig von Mises, A Primer, Institute of Economic Affairs 2010. Ebeling, Richard M. Political Economy, Public Policy, and Monetary Economics, Ludwig von Mises and the Austrian Tradition, London, New York, Routledge, 2010 354 pages, ISBN 978-0-415-77951-7. Ebeling, Richard M. Ludwig von Mises, The Political Economist of Liberty, Part 1. The Freeman, May 2006. Ebeling, Richard M. Ludwig von Mises, The Political Economist of Liberty, Part 2. The Freeman, June 2006. Ebeling, Richard M. Ludwig von Mises and the Vienna of His Time, Part 1. The Freeman, March 2005. Ebeling, Richard M. Ludwig von Mises and the Vienna of His Time, Part 2. The Freeman, April 2005. Ebeling, Richard M. Austrian Economics and the Political Economy of Freedom. The Freeman, June 2004. Gordon, David. The 23rd of February 2011. Mises's Epistemology. Ludwig von Mises Institute. Rothbard, Murray N. Mises, Ludwig Edler von. The New Palgrave, A Dictionary of Economics, 1987, v. 3, pp. 479-80. Shelton, Judy Money Meltdown, Restoring Order to the Global Currency System. New York, New York, Free Press. p. 399. ISBN 978-0029291122. OCLC 797359731, reviewed in, Dornbush, Rudy July 10, 1994. Money Meltdown. The Washington Post. Retrieved May 25, 2013. The hero in this book is Ludwig von Mises, from Highbeam Research. Von Mises, Margaret 1976. My Years with Ludwig von Mises. Arlington House Publishers. ISBN 0 368 2 Jaeger, Leland 2008. Mises, Ludwig von In Hamowy, Ronald. The Encyclopedia of Libertarianism. Thousand Oaks, C.A., Sage, Cato Institute. pp. 334-36. doi, 10.4135, 9781412. Million nine hundred sixty five thousand eight hundred eleven and two hundred five ISBN nine seven eight one four one two nine six five eight zero four LCCN two billion eight million nine thousand one hundred fifty one OCLC seven hundred fifty million eight hundred thirty one thousand twenty four Topic External Links Ludwig von Mises Institute Europe Mises
Hefte books and articles in the original German versions by Mises and other authors of the Austrian school Ludwig von Mises at Curlie Ludwig von Mises at Find a Grave Ludwig von Mises publications indexed by Google Scholar <laughs>